Welcome everybody. My name is Jim Lee. I'm the creator of climateviewer.com and I'm here to tell you a little story about a facility called HARP. If you're not familiar with it, we are talking about HARP, the High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program in Gakona, Alaska. It is a 3.6 megawatt transmitter, radio transmitter, 180 towers. Well, I'm over here on resonated.com. That is the radiation database you can see right here. So just scroll down to HARP. Angels play this HARP. And you're going to see a table of contents. Now these articles took me... the have taken me the last two years to put together. It's a lot of research. Um, some of it's very complicated. I don't expect everybody to understand it. Um, and most people will not care to be honest with you. But for me, um, this is a science fiction wonderland story. It's very interesting. Um, and it, you know, involves the military weather, um, and, and tons of new sci-fi stuff. It's not science fiction, though, people. This is the wild world of science fact. Um, so what is HARP? Let's, I'm going to start by clicking here on uh, HARP, the world's sexiest energy weapon. And that's going to take me over to my blog. That's resonated.net, the resonation. And this is where I keep most of my articles. And you can see here a uh, tutorial for Climate Viewer. We'll get into that a little later. Um, at the top here, I tell everybody to please read The Birth of Harp um, because really what matters is why it was made. Um, we'll get into that very shortly. So, who are all these people? Uh, who, who made uh, Harp? The Office of Naval, Naval Research, the Air Force Research Lab, DARPA, and Stanford's VLF group um, manage and operate the facility. Particularly, if you want to get in touch with them, uh, you can contact HARP at the Office of Public Affairs, Air Force Research Lab, and there's the address. So, um, Stanford VLF Group, you see the lightning bolt here. It is not a coincidence. They're very interested in uh, VLF and uh, transluminous event, um, if, you know, stuff that comes from lightning. <laughs> and they want to be able to artificially manufacture it using HARP. So, that's why they study uh, lightning bolts and the like. There's the device. Um, the, the, the big thing here you see right here is called the IRI. And most people think that HARP is just this antenna facility. HARP is actually a series of different um, instruments. And the IRI is the big one. It is the 3.6 megawatt um, you know, transmitter. All the details on that. Here's some close-ups. Here's inside the transmission um, little trailers. If you look right here, those are the trailers. Yeah, and there's a lot of them. <laughs> so um, this right here is the MUIR or Modular UHF Ionospheric Radar. And we have the optical trailers. These have LIDARs and all-sky all cameras, cameras that can see in 360 degrees so they can see the effects of what they're doing. you got an ionosan. This bounces radio waves off the ionosphere. Then you got the VHF radar. This is uh, looks like a bike rack. You tie your bicycle to that, I suppose. <laughs> Um, and then, of course, you have uh, receiving antennas so they can get their signals back. They've got an aircraft radar alert um, tower here. And this basically says, planes don't fly overhead. This is a fucking, it, this is an energy weapon here. <laughs> Finally, you have uh, the Heart Main Research Building a um, facility. And here's inside of it. I like to call this Death Star 1. And uh, that's where they control everything. Very nice. I'm sure it's been upgraded by now. Diesel power plants to run the whole thing. And uh, here are webcams showing it uh, live. This is today's date. No, these say 2009, 11, but I'm sure if you click on them, it should take you to, yeah, there's the webcam. So um, what does it do? Let's, let's, let's not focus on what it does in this video. Let's just focus real quickly on how it was made, why it was made. So we're gonna go over here to the birth of HARP. What can HARP do? HARP does radiation belt remediation. Ever heard of that? Apparently there's a lot of radiation in the atmosphere and they want to be able to control how much is up there to um, you know, be able to clean it of radiation and or inject radiation to either protect or destroy satellites and or ICBMs. Create an artificial ionospheric mirror. Much to do about this. 
Heard a lot about this on many, many websites. Nobody's ever showed me this, though. DTIC.mil, physics study in artificial ionospheric mirror-related phenomena. By Arco, they made it. There you go. So this is the military's version when this was proposed. Read it yourself. Then we have uh, create elf waves. I've, I've uploaded all of these documents to my Scribd account so that everybody can see them. Uh, good stuff. And we have plasma clouds. This is uh, the military saying that they created plasma clouds for about an hour back in November of 2012. And they are very proud of them. I tweeted this out and the Naval Research Lab retweeted me. Thanks, guys. Glad you appreciate what I do. I appreciate what you do. Um, create air glow using high frequency radio waves and or rocket exhaust plumes. Create holes in the ionosphere and modifies the magnetic properties of our planet to probe for underground structures. And, uh, you know, everybody talks about that. They say, oh, well, harps used to look underground. Well, here's the proof of that. Um, let's see, artificial ionospheric ducts are what they call them. Those are holes in heaven, as they've been referred to by uh, Mr. Begich. Then we have a uh, heater-induced artificial air glow, and that's because when harp, uh, when the rocket tears a hole in the sky, artificial uh, um, ion beam generators in the rocket accelerate electrons precipitating out of the atmosphere. So you rip a hole in the sky, and then all of that radiation up there that's trapped now floods down to the ground. And when that happens, it's the exact same thing that happens during a coronal mass ejection um, or a solar flare hitting the atmosphere, except we are artificially producing the air glow aka the aurora borealis so we're f with harp they are artificially creating air glow and um doing radiation belt remediation and you say why well the original uh proposals that i've been able to find go back to the satellite threat due to high altitude nuclear detonation eisenhower institute papadopoulos presentation presentation and in that you can see that the tether panel recommendation use harp facility in alaska as a wind tunnel to determine the feasibility and engineering specifications of a mitigation system for radiation in the atmosphere and then they show how it would work so this was called a wind tunnel for radiation look at that my harp foia is coming up bad request now interesting well there it is this is a top secret this was classified. Somebody did a Freedom of Information Act request on HARP. This is what they came back. They were actually looking for UFOs, and this is what they got back. Go figure. But if you look through it, this was classified. It really tells the story of what HARP does and how it works and all that. I suggest everybody read this when it's on Scribd. Um, if you come down through here, you're going to read the, the long history dating back to 1958's Project Argus when they started blowing up the sky with uh, nuclear blasts. And then uh, the world banned that with the limited test ban tree. They said, no, 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 no more of that. So they started doing it with, um, instead of using nuclear explosions, they started using particles uh, that were dispersed in the ionosphere. And then they either heated them with uh, arrays like the Arecibo array. Um, we have an example of that here, the CIRAS satellite. All of this stuff is real. Combined release and radiation effects satellite, plasma wave experiment. This thing would dump uh, sulfur hexafluoride, barium, lithium, and other chemicals into the ionosphere. And then the Arecibo array would actually heat them. Um, so even before HARP, Arecibo was doing it. And it says right here, multiple instrument studies of chemical releases and heating at the Arecibo array. Um, they actually have a new heater going in there. So this one was destroyed during a hurricane. So there'll be a new one up there. But if you look through this, people, this is all of the smoking gun evidence everybody ever wanted to know about HARP, how it works, why it was made, and who made it. I have all of the documents at the boxing bottom including straw man high frequency arrayed harps on barges might want to look into that um and then you know all of the stuff where they went to the stanford lab and said hey we need to modify the ion sphere and basically stanford lab said here's what we need to be able to do it they made harp here is the uh, harps uh environmental impact study so how much is it going to affect alaska i'm sure that that's real accurate um artificial ionospheric mirror here 
Here is the actual joint service program plans and activities where they designed and implemented HARP. Here it has the whole timeline of events. Um, you can literally see, you know, everything that went into making this device right here in this document. And even facilities that were, it says high frequency vertical heating facilities in operation before HARP. NIIR, Dushan Bay, Sura, Gork. Gorky and Monchgorsk, Arecibo, Fairbanks, Alaska, Platteville, um, and Tromso. So those were all heaters working before HARP, and there are many more. You'll have to come over to climateviewer.com to see them all. Um, and then finally down here at the bottom we have the uh, HARP goes portable, the microwave ionosphere reconfiguration ground-based emitter Mirage. Um, this is a HARP in a box on the back of a trailer and they use a rocket the chaff from the rocket they heat the chaff and it makes uh, plasma clouds so enjoy this guys um, finally we end with uh, Bernard Eastland's buddy uh, pre presenting harp stuff for tornado steering so using harps and uh, using satellite based microwave energy to steer tornadoes you can't get any better than this, people. Please read through it and share it with everybody. If you have any questions, holler at me. And this is Jim Lee from ClimateViewer.com, the radiation database, and a whole lot more <laughs> saying thanks for caring.